That's interesting, isn't it? That certainly was not true back in Bible days. But yet they talk about people being really, really, really old and having babies, so, you know? Oh, you're going back to the Old Testament time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not going back quite that far. Mm -hmm. I'm going back to the New Testament days. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Oh, man, that's when they lived a long, long time, isn't it? <laughs> I'm kind of glad I'm living today <clears throat> for several reasons. Uh, what is assumed in the requirements to be on the list? <laughs> Having one husband. Have been, oh, have only been married once. Yeah, and, yeah, that's right, that they'll never remarry, and that therefore they have no one else to look to for help, and their only recourse is the church that God has provided. Now, what's the list? We really have not given any more information on what we just got through reading. Uh, apparently, they kept a record, and uh, the people who were put on this record were itemized so that everyone would have a clear understanding who this is. Uh, maybe that's to make sure that no, people weren't going around constantly saying, well, how old are you anyhow? Okay. It's not nice to ask older people, I guess. That, so they tell me, it doesn't bother me, but it barely does some. Uh, so they have a list. Is this woman on the list? Well, she is. <clears throat> but uh, they would have understood what the list is. Yes, sure enough. So that wife of one man, what if she's a younger woman, her husband dies, and she marries again, would she still be married, interpreted as married to one man in that case? I'm sure glad you asked that. I think so, very definitely. Oh. Because I understand this phrase to be very much like the phrase we talked about before, when we talked about the man. This is a one-man type woman, just like in the previous chapters, we're talking about a one woman type man. So just because a man is married and lost his wife in death and remarried, this could have happened two or three times. But are they still a one woman type man? Yes. And here would be a one man type woman. That's what the Greek language is making clear here, I think. Thank you for asking that. Um, would there have been many widows on the list? I don't think so. Not in Bible days, not in New Testament days. Uh, in light of what knowledge we have from <clears throat> secular history. Does this verse mean that a woman who is 60 but has never been married cannot expect any help from the church? No, no I don't think so. Uh, now some people are going to press this and make it very literal. And uh, once again, I personally view the scriptures as giving us God's standard whereby we make intelligent decisions and we try to fit that standard as we feel like <coughs> the spirit of the word really is intending that it should be so uh, I think that uh, she is a one man type of woman that he's talking about here did the church ever have a widow office is that a window office a widow <laughs> did, did I have no, there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, they might have if they had a list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this was true in the early centuries of church history. This is not indicated anywhere in the scriptures. But uh, people have uh, suggested that this opens the door for a particular service that widows can perform and that. Uh, there are some people who have uh, gone in that direction, but uh, <clears throat> to say that there's actually an official widow's <laughs> office in the church, I don't quite see that, but uh, we do know that some churches have done that, don't have a problem with that, but uh, I don't know that the scriptures are stating that. So I'm just asking as a matter of, has this ever been true in the early history of the church? Yes, but we don't know of any example of it in the New Testament itself. Uh, obviously, there were, we do have examples of individual widows that uh, did a lot for other people. And of course, 
That's the kind of person he's describing here, but it was not describing a person who had an office in the church uh, as an assignment to somebody who just is in right relationship with God and wants to do good and let God's love shine through her. Uh, the purpose of the list is obscure. Um, it probably is to make sure that uh, the people on this list are those who are most likely not to remarry. Remarriage is not prohibited, by the way. So apparently they had done a little bit of discussing with the individual. And uh, it could have been that a person might have had their name on the list and then it was removed because through circumstances they did choose to remarry. So the list may have clarified the above 60 by saying even though they met that requirement, they didn't meet the other because they did get married and now we resort back to family taking care of family. Would read verse 10, please. Having a reputation for good works, and if she has brought up children, if she has shown hospitality to strangers, if she has washed the saints' feet, if she has assisted those in distress, and if she has devoted herself to every good work. Thank you. Is the order in which good works are mentioned in this verse significant? Child care comes first, doesn't it? And then hospitality next, and humble service toward fellow believers. Then general sympathy and benevolent comes finally. What is to be understood by brought up children? Yeah, and you know, she may have cared for her own children, she may have cared for other people's children, but she has shown love to children. Maybe she even opened her home to orphans. This, this, wrote, uh, this is a general term that could be understood in different ways. How is hospitality shown? Yeah, this is shown by opening your home to somebody else, preparing a meal for somebody else, visiting somebody else, assisting in any way you can. Who set an example of washing feet? Jesus. Jesus in the upper room. Was washing feet a religious rite or a courteous deed in Bible days? Courteous, courteous deed, right. Never a religious rite. What is required of the person who washes feet? Be gentle. Humility. It certainly does. Uh, by the way, is there a reason why most of us do not practice foot washing today? You know, well, we wear shoes. That's exactly right. Conditions are just not the same. This is why, if you read very carefully in the 13th chapter of John, where Jesus washed the disciples' feet, he said, I've left you an example that you should do. What's the very next word? No. That you should do two letter word. Likewise has too many letters in it. <laughs> but you're exactly right. It's the same as like, likewise. What's the word as? Yes. I've led an example that you should do as I have done to you. In other words, how would we show humility today? How would we show hospitality today? Offer somebody something to drink? Or... Yeah, if they're really hot, offer them something cold to drink. And take if it's in the cold north, take their wraps. And, and also show them a place where they can sit down and and uh, you know, just accept common com so comfort. Yeah. How's that? Shut the TV off. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 yeah. You know, that's, that's an interesting statement you just made. It jogged my memory. Uh, one of my close preacher friends years ago uh, was calling with one of the young men in his congregation, pretty young man, a young man that uh, was. Uh, kind of crude in a lot of things that he did and said. And, but he wanted to encourage this young man. And so he went to this, took this young man along with him to go calling. And they called this one home where they were not Christians so he could lead him to Christ. And so they got in the home and the television set was on. And so the preacher was exchanging pleasantries. And, and finally the young man just got up and turned the television off said, okay, preacher, I turned it off. Now tell him how to be saved. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, did he get to the subject in a hurry. <laughs> uh, there might have been a smoother way to handle this. <laughs> Are we to help those in distress even if they brought the trouble on themselves? Yes. 
Yeah. Yes. I think so. We all bring a lot of stuff on ourselves. We don't necessarily want to, but sometimes we do. Are there any circumstances in this verse that would not be applicable to every Christian? No. I don't think so. What are they? Let's see. Good works, hospitality, uh, washing feet, that's showing humility, assisting in distress, devoted to every good work. That'll be true of everyone as we treat other people. Are those who hold high the standards of this verse a good advertisement for Christianity? Yes. yes. Sure are. Are the duties in this verse which the widow is now doing or what she has been doing? Has been doing. This has characterized her past life. That's brought to this very point. May we assume that a childless widow could never be enrolled? No, no I don't think so. Uh, but refuse. No, I'm sorry. We've got to stop here. We've run out of time. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. We'll stop right there. We'll stop the. We'll talk to younger widows next week. Let's pray. <laughs> Father, I thank you for each one who's here tonight, and I thank you for the practicality of the instructions that you've given to us. Help us to uh, think about these things, not just to dismiss them, but to think about them. Help us to really put a high priority upon who we are in relationship to our family whatever our age is. Help us to have family love. At the same time, help us to have your kind of love, godly love. And I pray particularly in our church family that we'll have both kinds of love. That we'll see each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. As those who we love because we are united to one another by virtue of our being united to you. And just as each one of us here tonight had nothing to say about whether we would or wouldn't have brothers or sisters, we're not allowed to choose them and the number of them or the sex of them, we just have them. And we love them because they are family. And the same thing's true in your church. So help us to love one another more and more every day. And I thank you for informal occasions like the one we've just experienced tonight and are experiencing right now, in which we love each other and we feel a certain bond with each other because of our bond with you. May the love that you have for each one of us shine through our lives for one another. I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 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 Thank you so much. Appreciate you coming. Yeah, we're back. Oh, yeah. oh, I know. 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 I I I I How you doing? Eating strength every day. That's good. That's good. 
always good to see you.